This is the S. Yolanda Robinson Show. And guess what? I am doing some interviews with some of the inductees and the Hall of Famers with the Greater Columbus Basketball Legends Association. Yeah! <laughs> well, guess what? I got guess what? I'm on the show. I'm so excited. I have John Howard, Dr. John Howard. Now, you know what? Dr. John Howard is just a legend everywhere he goes. He's a legend in the basketball field. He's a legend in the academics. He's a legend in the community. I just don't know how he just does what he has, but he has the magical touch. He used to be with the Harlem Globetrotters. He's a professor at the University of Cincinnati, and he was a superintendent of East Orange, New Jersey. I mean, uh, let me let me bring him on and introduce you to him. You'll see how. <laughs> but uh, John, how are you doing today? Hey, Yolanda, I'm doing pretty good. How are you doing today? Oh, just fine, just fine. You know what? I'm just getting so excited about the um, Basketball Legends Association, uh, uh, Greater Columbus Basketball Legends Association Hall of Fame. <laughs> and you know what? Everybody that went uh, with me last uh, uh, enshrinement, they are buying tickets again. <laughs> oh, great, great. I'm <laughs> I might have five tables. I'm telling you. Oh, wow. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you've yeah. always supported us from the beginning, and that's oh. what we were but you know what it's been a it's it, it's it's been so much fun and so loving and i'm just so grateful and thankful to be able to connect with you i got excited when i met basketball players that were as concerned about our community wanting That's to right. back, wanting to do whatever they can to help the next generation and it's been such a pleasure to to work absolutely and it's been fun too. I, I, well, a lot of people don't realize that we're more than just, you know, former basketball players. You know, we feel that we need to give back to the community from what we came from. And Columbus, you know, is a yes. north end. You know, they call it Italian Village now, but I grew up in the north end at 4th Avenue and 4th Street, actually the rear of 4th Avenue and 4th Street uh -huh. behind Baptist Church. So my roots are there, and uh, I continue to try to do what I can in my own little way to uh, to help the community. After 11 years, we're still still in existence. Well, you know what? You don't really have to because a lot of people don't, you know, they leave us and, and say, bye-bye, took a look at yeah. you. Know? That's true. <laughs> but, You're right. But y'all don't do that. Y'all just, mm -hmm. y'all y'all you know, come back. I've seen you lecture to some of the youth. You're yes. giving out computers to the youth, uh, talking about bullying. I mean, you know, it's just been amazing. That's why I enjoy working with you. Oh, uh, well, Thanks, I thanks see, a lot. I see Dip this and I, back. Dip and I, Wallace Chandler, we really had gotten together about 11 or 12 years ago and decided that we need to do something for our hometown. And we decided we had a common uh, mutual interest and we all played basketball. We all grew up uh, in Columbus and we decided to at least put this together and honor not only just the former players through the induction process, but you know, that we've gone beyond just the players. We've also uh, included uh, community people, politicians, uh, business people, uh, the whole works. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, yes, I know because you know uh, I got inducted in two two thousand nineteen, and and my high school friend said, "How did that happen?" <laughs> I tell me, you, do it. Tell I me you even shoot the field the too. <laughs> but I knew how to market, you know. Thank I you. knew how to do PR and stuff, and so that's, that's what true. they uh, gave me the uh, you gave me the award for. But everybody, I mean, I said God has a, a good sense of humor because you had the instructor on the same day that East High School had the high school reunion and some of the That's people, right. Yolanda, the basketball thing. <laughs> and now it's <laughs> some of the former NBA players. I'm just so happy about that. That's true. Well, you deserved it. Now. You deserved it. Now. All right. That's why we did it for you. <laughs> Thank you so much. But you know what? What do you tell people? I mean, there are some students that are interested in basketball and they may not make the team. They don't make the NBA. What do you tell those people, John? Well, they got to stay in education. I mean, you know, I've been in education for 50, 54 years and Skip was in education for a little uh, period of time. Uh -huh. And Basketball is really the vehicle to get us to each level. So I use 
education to get me into college. I use education to get my first teaching assignment. I use education to get my principal's assignment. I use my education to get my uh, superintendent. I, in other words, it's education. Basketball is just really the tool that you use with your talent that pays for all this stuff. Mm -hmm. You can't all believe in everything. And everybody's going to go in the pros because less than one tenth of one percent of all college athletes are even eligible to play. And then those that play really only last about three years. So uh -huh. really to uh -huh. tell kids to put their dream around basketball when there's only about three or four hundred positions open a year. And those positions are basically filled by first and second round draft choices. It's really not something that we want to promote. We want to promote the education side, the business side, and make sure that these young folks uh, understand that a meaningful career besides their basketball talents exists. Uh -huh. And that's what GCBLA is all about. Okay, you talked about the business part. You know, there is a business part about basketball. Yeah. And I don't think and people really know the things that when you look at the whole team i mean the game there's people that's selling food there's people that that's marketing the program and the, the, the doctors could you you know there's a whole gamut of things in basketball that you can do well a lot of a lot of people don't know that i owned actually i still own a, a professional basketball league uh yes. center jump professional basketball and that's exactly what i was trying to do as a pro co-ed model where we were putting men and women together on the same basketball team so that we could bring back an economic uh, opportunity into the community again. See, a lot of people don't realize that one time African-Americans own their baseball franchise, basketball franchise, uh, football franchise. And it's also been said that blacks had a lot to do with starting hockey. Well, mm -hmm. I don't have a lot of information on that part of it. Mm -hmm. But I know at one time we had an economic base in the community around the country in these sports. And mm -hmm. what we ended up doing, we gave up those opportunities to become part of Major League Baseball, NBA, mm -hmm. and National Football. Mm -hmm. And as a result, we literally gave a whole economic system that was in the Black community to integration. Now, and everybody knows that I'm, a, I'm an integrationist. I'm not talking about uh -huh. a separation or uh -huh. anything dealing uh -huh. with anti-white, all, of, all uh -huh. of that. I'm saying that we gave up an economy so that we uh -huh. could be part of this movement during the civil rights era called integration. Yeah. And I believe that part set us back because we no longer have ownership of Major League Basketball football or baseball. Mm -hmm. And so I tried to do the same thing with my professional basketball league. We had it up and going in New York. Uh, mm -hmm. And basically we ran out of money, but you're absolutely correct. So short of that, Greater Columbus Basketball Legends Association is here to let the young folks as well as the former players and those associated with basketball to know that there's more things that we can do to help our people to get through life, and that's what we're all about. Okay, I want to go back to the academics part. You know, I, and I, I, what, what 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 would you do if you if how would you uh, uh, consult your son? Say if he wanted to go into if he was getting into the MBA out of high school, yes, and, and had a scholarship. Which one would you tell him to do now? Well, let's put it this way: all depends on the money. <laughs> Oh, this on the money. I mean, these kids are getting, you know, these kids are getting Yolanda millions of dollars nowadays versus when I came out. I mean, obviously you couldn't even play in the NBA uh, coming out of high school when I came out in 1964. But now, I mean, if these kids are getting millions of dollars coming out of high school, my thing is, look, take the money. Yeah. But at the same time, since you've got these millions in the bank, Go to school, continue to go to school in the off season and get your degree and get your education. So I'm not going to tell a kid, go to college and you are now missing a $5 million opportunity. Uh -huh. Take the $5 million, uh -huh. And then when the season's over, 
enroll yourself in advanced education, higher education, and uh -huh. get your uh, college degree. I mean, that's uh -huh. it's, it's a simple mix. It's so a, I'm saying in this sense, it. economics. Yeah, yeah. economics, <laughs> economics. <laughs> okay. Yeah. okay, well, I, and what advice would you give to parents on on, a, on on helping their children with, you know, when they uh, they have an aspiration for basketball, how, how what, what should they be? To, is that one of the things that you would give to the parents? In yeah, I've seen so much talent around this country. And, you know, when I played with the Globe Globetrotters, I was able to, visit just about every state in the union. And I met with a lot of parents, even in education. And what I would tell the parents, again, what I keep saying over and over again, every kid is not going to be given an opportunity to go and play professional basketball or baseball or football or any of these sports. Only the talented 10th of 1% is going to make it. And it doesn't make sense to try to push all of your kids into a pro level when in fact there's so much competition there for limited jobs, it just doesn't make sense. Inconsistent with what I think parents should be telling their kids. They should be telling their kids, finish your high school program. And if we have some resources set aside, or if you can work, get into college, get that advanced degree, because most of these new jobs, especially in the technology field, mm -hmm. they're going to require, and they do require at least two years of uh, advanced uh, training beyond high school. Mm -hmm. So my thing is you can make as much money and have a nice, comfortable living if you get those extra two years beyond high school. And I preach that all the time. And if you're fortunate enough, like some of us, to play professional basketball, mm -hmm. then take the opportunity, but always come back and finish that education. I'm a good example of that. I literally yeah. quit at the end of, my, end of my senior year to play at the Globe Charters. But I went back and finished and got my degree after the season was over. So uh, what I'm saying is I not only preach it, but that's what happened to me. <laughs> you don't only <laughs> preach it, you live it. Too. <laughs> all right. All right. Try to and live it, yeah. You're an author, too, and a publisher. I mean, yes. yeah, you are the one of the uh, basketball NBA players that talks <laughs> about you. entrepreneurship. And you, you not only talk about it, you are about yeah. it. Well, I, I believe in, you know, one of the things that a lot of people don't realize, you know, I taught college English for almost 15 years, and I'm the first author in the world to have ever written books in what we call E-prime. In other words, the verbs am, be, been, being, is, are, was, and were, and become are not in any of my fiction books. I have two adventure series that I've been marketing around the country, and I have some artwork that's attached to it that I'm getting ready to really unload it this year uh -huh. and let people really know what I've been doing. But you're absolutely correct. Uh -huh. The education side, and, and I'm fortunate enough that I was able to, at Ohio State University, to pick up my master's degree in English education, and I studied the English sentence. And that really helped me to understand the nuances and complexities of uh, how sentences are actually structured at the uh, micro level. And that's really kind of one of my contributions uh, to writing. Oh, yes. I seems like, I'm, and, and, and I, not only that, I think you are two-time, is that right, two-time Hall of Famer? Yes, two-time uh, Hall of Famer. And that's, oh. again, I, I oh, work wow. for that in family, my mother and father, my brothers and sisters, and the community for, you know, supporting me through the years. Uh, it's kind of interesting because I never played junior high school basketball. I was kicked off the team three years in a row you because I, off the team. Yeah, I never even played. Yeah, you know, I was playing at Thompson Recreation Center uh, when I was at Everett Junior High School. And uh -huh. they had some unwritten rule that you couldn't play recreation ball. And to this day, you know, I never saw it. My parents never saw it. But I never played junior high school basketball. I literally went from sixth grade to uh, high school uh, basketball because uh -huh. I was kicked off of Everett Junior High School's uh, team. I never played. Oh, uh, shame on you, Everett Junior student. High School. <laughs> see what, yeah, you, right. see what right. you did. <laughs> it's not <laughs> over when it, it, it shows you that it's not over when people do that to you. Absolutely. And yeah. the guys, yeah. I, grew up in, I grew up in town. I played all around in every recreation center in town. And uh -huh. uh, guys uh, were aware of what was going on. But what happened with me was that it's unfortunate I was the only one that was victimized by that. And as a result, uh, I never, I never, play, I played baseball, but I never played uh, junior high school basketball. 
Oh, uh, <laughs> I played with the Harlem Globetrotters, and I, now you are I played with some of the greats. A two-time Hall of Fame. I played with some of the greats. With the Globe, I played guard position with the uh, Metal Lark and Curly, oh. uh, Bobby Joe Mason, All American out of Bradley, uh, Helicopter, uh, Jackie Jackson. All these guys are. Most of these guys played in the HBCU circuit, but uh -huh. many of them are in the Hall of Fame in uh, New York City. So I played alongside some of the great uh, New York City basketball players. I started. I didn't just sit the bench. I I was starting with these guys. Oh, my gosh. You have and I was fortunate. That I, for I hope you write a book <laughs> about yourself, <laughs> not about the fiction right, stuff right, that you do. Right. You need to write a book about yourself, John. <laughs> well, some people uh, that would ask be me so to do inspiring. <laughs> Huh? Oh, thank it would be so thank inspiring you. Yes, to the next generation. That would that, that's what we need to have, and they, uh, the uh, next the next generation needs to hear. You know that, and it's, yeah. you know, don't give up. Do not give up. But, I, will. I appreciate it. Yeah, I, I will. I'm looking forward to the Hall of Fame uh, enshrinement. I'm trying to get. I'm getting trying to get my dress together now. Yeah. <laughs> so, is my, so is my sister and like my cousins and everybody that's right. going. But, uh, uh, oh, but I can't you. wait to see y'all. And uh, you know, uh, August the twentieth uh, at the, yeah. uh, at the Worthington Christian High School. Uh, so yeah, I'll three o'clock. It's at three o'clock, isn't it? At three o'clock from three yes. to six. And if you need tickets, they're not gonna be selling tickets at the door. That's what Skip said. So you gotta get them now. So you uh it's at uh, you go to greater cbla dot org. And yeah. uh, so John, I'd like to thank you for being on this week's program of S Yolanda Robinson. Yes. <laughs> thank you. And thank you too. <laughs> and I, I'll see you, all of you at the Hall of Faith uh, at the Hall Hall of Fame enshrinement on August the 20th. And I'll see you too there, John. Okay. God bless you, Jelani. Thank you. God man. bless you too. And I want to see that book. Okay. You got that right. You got it. I, I got something for you anyway. That. I want to help promote that. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.